We have tackled quite a few site of the day features so far. Now it's time to step up a notch and explore the site of the month. Last month's winner had something special, an amazing scroll animation in the client section. I have never tried making anything like it before, but I was excited to give it a shot using HTML, CSS, JavaScript and scroll trigger. In this video, I'll guide you through every step so you can create your own such cool scroll animation using scroll trigger. If you find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and might subscribe as well. As a friendly reminder, don't miss out on unlocking exclusive access to the source code and receiving monthly website templates by joining CodeGrid Pro. You can check out the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. We'll start with a container to hold everything together. Let's create a sticky bar. It will have three columns, each called an item, with text inside. We'll add extra sections to fill out our page. A hero section with an image. The logos section will make rows with two placeholders in each. For now, we'll use text for the logos. Later you can replace them with images. Don't forget to add a footer section. It will trigger the sticky bar animation as we scroll. And that's it. Let's style the page. We'll start by removing all the margins and paddings and setting box sizing to border box. We'll ensure our HTML and body elements take up the entire viewport, setting their width and height to 100%. Plus, we'll specify a font family. To prevent default overscrolled behavior, we'll disable it to none. We'll style images to fit nicely within their containers using the object fit property. For paragraphs, we'll apply some uniform styling, transforming text to uppercase and setting a font size and weight. Onto the sticky bar, it will be fixed to the top of the viewport, centered vertically and set display to flex to align the items in a row layout. Next up, I'll define the column width for the first and third items and set the text alignment to right for the third column specifically. The middle column will have flex value of 1 and center text. The text within each item of the sticky bar will be white with font size adjusted responsively. Moving on to the hero section, it will occupy the full viewport width and height. We'll style the client section, adding some padding and a white background. Each row within the client section will have a flex layout, centered and spaced out evenly. We'll ensure the logo text stands out with a larger font size. For the trigger footer section, we'll set its dimensions and give it a black background as a backup even though we have image inside it. Lastly, we will apply some responsive tweaks for smaller screens, adjusting font sizes accordingly. And there you have it. Our CSS is all set to bring our design to life. We are adding an event listener to wait for the DOM content loaded event, which fires when the initial HTML document has been completely loaded and passed. Inside the event listener function, 
we are first registering the scroll trigger plugin from GSAP. We are then selecting the elements with the classes sticky bar and trigger footer using document.query selector. These elements will be used as reference points for our scroll animations. We are also calculating the height of the footer trigger element using offset height. This height will be used in our scroll animation calculations. Next, we define a function called get sticky bar center, which calculates the vertical center position of the sticky bar. This function returns the sum of the offset top position of the sticky bar and half of its height. This center position will be crucial for some of our scroll animations. We want to create a scroll trigger animation that adjusts the spacing between logos in each row when they are about to overlap the sticky bar. So we are selecting all elements with the class row which represents our logo rows. For each row, we create a scroll trigger using scroll trigger.create function. The trigger property is set to the current row element. This means the animation will be triggered when the row comes into the view during scrolling. The start property determines when the animation should start. We calculate this dynamically to ensure the animation begins when the row is about to overlap the sticky bar. This ensures that logos start spacing out just before reaching the sticky bar. The end property determines when the animation should end. Similarly, it's calculated to ensure the animation ends just after the row passes the sticky bar. Setting scrub to true enables smooth animation scrubbing behavior. The on update function runs every time the animation updates. Here we calculate the current gap between logos based on the scroll progress. As the user scrolls, this gap dynamically adjusts to create a smooth spacing effect between logos. Finally, we apply the calculated gap to the row element style using row.style.gap. This dynamically adjusts the spacing between logos in the row, creating a visually pleasing effect as the user scrolls. We are duplicating this animation block to create a similar effect for each row. I am going to duplicate this animation again and make some adjustments. By tweaking the start and end offsets as well as the minimum and maximum gap values will ensure that when the rows surpass and move above the sticky bar, the gap between the logos start decreasing back to its default value. With the next roll trigger, we are focusing on the footer trigger element. We have set the trigger to be the footer trigger element which means our animation will be activated when this element comes into the view during scrolling. The animation starts when the top of the viewport reaches the top of the footer trigger element and ends when the top of the trigger footer element reaches a position calculated dynamically based on the height of the footer trigger element and the height of the viewport. As the user scrolls, we want the sticky bar to smoothly transition its vertical position. So we are using the onUpdate function to dynamically adjust the top position of the sticky bar. We have defined the start and end positions for the top of the sticky bar where the start top represents the initial position and the end top represents the position when the animation completes. Using the scroll progress, we calculate the new top position of the sticky bar between the start and end positions. This ensures a smooth transition effect. Finally, we apply the new top position to the sticky bar style, ensuring it moves smoothly as the user scrolls. The animation starts when the footer trigger element is 100 pixels above the bottom of the viewport and ends when it reaches the bottom of the viewport. As the animation progresses, the font size of the text in the sticky bar smoothly transitions from a smaller size to a larger size. This creates a visually appealing effect as the user scrolls down the page. And that's pretty much it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.